purpose. Mm -hmm. So with that, I thought I would uh, sort of open up maybe with a question about purpose, if I may. Um, and of course, I want to hear about your book and everything you're doing. But my my question for you um, really comes down to how do you define like you know purpose driven or a personal mission as it applies to say to a company's employees and workers like what do you think about the individual purpose how that unfolds mm -hmm. that's a great question and and so i i really want to answer it before thinking about the company i want to answer it where the individual sure. take a yes. moment to think about themselves so of course my background is as a pastor and it's also as a psychologist so i'm always talking about purpose. And I believe that people should engage in employment that feeds their soul, that feeds their mm. spirit. And so you might say, well, I don't know what my purpose is. I just wanted a job. And that's why mm. I started working with this company. Mm. I would invite those individuals though to think about what are the things that are meaningful to you? What are your values? What are your goals that you want in life? And what's your own personal mission? Mm. Because you have to figure out whether the company that you're working for is in alignment with your goals and with your mission and with your values. So you begin to kind of think about, well, why was I put here on this earth for? We're all here for a particular reason. There's something for us to accomplish. So we take a step back. We evaluate whether this thing um, that I'm doing, is it something that I could do for hours on end and not, um, like time has elapsed because I'm enjoying it so much. Right. That's the first sort of thing that I would ask people to think about. And then to ask people, what am I really good at? If you have, if you're having a hard time thinking about what your gifts, your talents are, ask other people, what am I good with? And then mm. spending time, spending time in that sort of sacred space of mm. saying, what feeds me? When you know that, yeah. feeds you. And then when you're able to define what your values are, mm -hmm. then you can take them to the company. Hmm. When you're able to do, and what I mean by that, it's not like you have to go and talk to the CEO about yeah. what's going on with you. You could talk to the next person, like your supervisor. Mm -hmm. If you are engaged in <clears throat> that doesn't seem like it's in alignment with who you are. Yeah. Now, to answer your question then about how companies then should actually support their mm -hmm. member, their employees. If I have someone working for me in my company and they come and they talk to me about what their mission is, what their values are, their purpose is, mm -hmm. it would behoove me to mm -hmm. see if the work that I am giving them is something that's going to lead to greater productivity yes. in the company because mm -hmm. that's what you want to make sure of. And are they happy? Are they mm -hmm. mentally well, right? Or are they feeling unseen, unheard? And right. is it just another job for them? If an employer makes sure that their employees are happy, mm -hmm. it really will be an advantage for the company itself. So mm -hmm. I, I, it's very, very important. Now, how does this yes. relate to women and how does it relate to people? Mm. That was a nice question for you, actually, but you said we were into it nicely. Yes, exactly. So mm -hmm. oftentimes mm -hmm. women don't feel like they are heard. We get paid mm -hmm. less mm -hmm. most often. Yes. And in particular, people of color, when we are in places where there are especially only a few of us represented it, represented at the table, we yes. get looked over often for the position mm -hmm. or our um, ideas are not valued. Mm -hmm. We feel stifled. Our gifts are not being used adequately. Mm -hmm. So ultimately, when people feel unseen and unheard, mm -hmm. they begin looking for jobs elsewhere mm -hmm. or they don't put their all into the job, which yeah. ultimately hurts the company. And this is the thing that I talk to um, mm -hmm. companies about often, the amount of days that people take off because mm -hmm. they're sick. And I mean, right. sometimes 
actually sick, not just psychologically like sure. making up stuff or or not just emotionally making up stuff. Yeah, I mean like physical body, virus, so yeah. Mm -hmm. Physical, but the psychological and the emotional is just as important as well. Yeah. Because those things lead to people taking off work uh as well. And it creates problems. And then people have to go to the doctors and you know health insurance goes up. So it's, <clears> it's, it's a ripple effect. Yeah, you know, Trella and Doctor, absolutely. I mean, I hear a couple of things there, right? Really good points you're making. I hear about, you know, like the individual, sort of the importance of, you know, focusing, examining, introspection. What is, what are one's values? What, what are you good at? What are your gifts and talents? And also, I like you said about if you're not sure, you can ask other people, right? You know, what do you see right in me? And listen for the common theme. Someone says, well, you know, you're very passionate, right? You're very outspoken. You're very, you know. Like, creative, very, uh, very courageous um, to hear that so that if a person maybe isn't quite ready to take it in, like they can it's like trust other people, you know, borrow their opinion of you mm -hmm. and then, right, have that, you know, sit with that, process it, kind of grow into it, own it. But then like the, the second part of this equation that the company, you know, especially we're talking about purpose in the employment realm since employment law today, right, like the company has to create you know, a safe place for the person to express themselves. And to your other point, a company benefits when it's flexible, right? If it's rigid, no, sorry, we hired you, you know, as assistant accounts payable, and that's where you are, and that's where you'll stay. Um, you know, if the company has other positions open, and this is something I tell my clients a lot, I have, you know, business owners and, you know, companies that represent employment law issues that often, you know, if you, we talk about the employment laws that apply, but also the business practices, and we say, if you have an employee that's feeling, as you mentioned, unseen, unheard, you know, stifled, not represented at the table, they're going to develop some resentment. They're not going to perform as well. There's going to be clashes. And maybe there'll be some implicit bias, you know, underlying some of the tone of those clashes. And maybe you'll find yourself on the other end of a discrimination complaint, which is losers mm -hmm. for everybody. So, you know, I think you raised some really good points there about, you know, and then to make it bring it back to women and, and, and people of color, women of color, right? The importance of a company um, giving people that that space, you know, to stay what they want. And I think our society often tells women and people of color, right? That they're not uh, entitled to the full, sadly, value, right? That other people, you know, get that they should be somehow just fortunate, you know, lucky that, you know, they're, you know, in this cushy position as if, the implication being that, you know, a man could have taken that spot, you know, mm -hmm. or a white man. So mm -hmm. I think that's really, I don't know if that's part of what you're saying, but that's what I hear mm -hmm. and, you know, putting it out there to, to the universe as well, you know. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, um, Eric, I, I would love to, I know you're going to have to take a break very shortly, but I would love to, when we come back to really uh, give a good example of an employer listening to one of his employees and how it actually mm -hmm. benefited him really powerfully so um that sounds like a great segue and, and to a commercial break and then to come back with that you know the suspense of the story that people want to hear so if you're listening uh here to talk with you NYC you're listening to and watching employment law today I'm your host Eric Sauber employment law attorney my guest tonight the Reverend Dr. Pathologist Dr. Tur Turlin excuse me Curry and Green aka Reverend Dr. TLC when we come back we're going to talk more about finding purpose, you know, evolving purpose with employees. And we'll hear the story that of, you know, an employer doing just that. So stick around. We'll be right back. Are you a business owner? Do you want to be a business owner? Do you work with business owners? Hi, I'm Stephen Fry, your small and medium-sized business or SMB guy. And I'm the host of the new show, Always Friday. While I love to have fun on my show, we take those Friday feelings of freedom and clarity to discuss popular topics in the minds of SMBs today. Please join me and my various special guests on Friday at 11 a.m. on talkradio.nyc. Are you a conscious co-creator? Are you on a quest to raise your vibration and your consciousness? I'm Sam Leibowitz, your Conscious Consultant. And on my show, The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, we will touch upon all these topics and more. Listen live at our new time on Thursdays at 12 noon Eastern Time. That's The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, Thursdays, 12 noon on talkradio.nyc. Are you 
Are you on edge? Hey, we live in challenging, edgy times, so let's lean in. I'm Sandra Bargeman, the host of The Edge of Every Day, which airs each Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time on talkradio.nyc. Tune in live with me and my friends and colleagues as we share stories and perspectives about pushing boundaries and exploring our rough edges. That's The Edge of Every Day on Mondays at 7 p.m. Eastern Time on talkradio.nyc. You're listening to Talk Radio NYC. Uplift, educate, empower. Welcome back to Employment Law Today. I'm your host, Eric Sovereign. Our guest tonight, the Reverend Dr. Terlyn Curry Avery, who has her own show, Dismantling Racism, on this very station on Thursdays at 11 a.m. Did I say that correctly? Yes, you did. 11 a.m. Yes. Eastern time. Mm-hmm. That's right. Eastern time. I always mention that too because we have listeners all over the country and even up the nation. So um, it was really great to have you on again, you know, um, Re- Dr. Uh, TLC, if I may, we've been on the show yes, before, yes. you know, I've been a guest on your show, you've been a guest on my show, and just great to talk about these issues. So you left us off in a cliffhanger before the commercial um, of having a, an employer, I think you said, or a business owner who... Yes, yes. Yeah. So, um, curious to hear, but so remember, it, and, well, how could, we, how could you not remember, but in 2020, when we had this surge of people throwing money out there on Mm -hmm. uh to to black institutions because Mm -hmm. after george floyd was murdered and Mm -hmm. we just had a lot of people saying here's money 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 and my Mm -hmm. thing has always been you have to do more than throw money at the situation yes Yes. the money is is you know it's valuable sure but what else do you need to do how do we change the structure how do we change the system Mm -hmm. and how do we begin to look and hear our black and brown employees? Mm-hmm. So my understanding, now I don't know this part for a fact, but Ralph Lauren was talking to his employees in a meeting and probably the high level ones, I'm guessing, yeah. or hereabouts. And he was mm-hmm. talking with them about race mm-hmm. and that he wanted to do more mm-hmm. to make sure that he was recognizing the black and brown culture Mm -hmm. so your guests can actually go to youtube there is a trailer called (laughs) rap a Mm -hmm. portrait of the american dream Mm -hmm. and what he did so in that in that particular meeting my understanding is there were people of color who voiced their opinions about what was going on in the world and what Mm -hmm. their lives were like. And he really sat and he really listened to it. And Mm -hmm. then he took into consideration, I don't know which employee it was, who gave him all these good ideas about some things that he could do. So in this trailer, A Portrait of an American Dream, Mm -hmm. what Mm -hmm. Ralph Lauren does is he goes to two historically black colleges and universities. He went Mm -hmm. to Morehouse College and Spelman College. And he looked at the clothing, a lot of it, some of his stuff, but he did look at the clothing that they wore from way back in the day, as we would say, time. Mm -hmm. Brilliant, brilliant. Because what it did is it showed that he paid attention to us and our culture. Hmm. And he recognized that we also support his industry. Hmm. So Mm -hmm. from the perspective as a business owner, he actually just increased the number of people who are going to go out and buy paraphernalia for their organizations, for their colleges and universities. If Ralph Lauren is could, you know, his name is associated with some of this stuff. Mm -hmm. So he just tapped his business. But what he also did was he listened to his employees Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. who were coming up with creative design Mm -hmm. 
as well for him. And these are people who are still able to live their purpose and their purpose is in alignment with their values. So yeah. maybe a person is into fashion, but they also want to ensure that there's racial equity in the world. Mm -hmm. So for mm -hmm. each of us, when we're thinking about our passion and mm. our purpose, we also, I keep taking it back to our values because Eric, one of the things that mm -hmm. I see is that for instance, white people may say that um, I, I'm not a racist or I believe mm -hmm. that we're all equal, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Great. Mm -hmm. It's great to believe it. But now mm -hmm. what are you doing where your behavior yeah. is in alignment with that? Right. So I think Absolutely. whatever our purpose is, we have to make sure, just like I do with any other uh, issue mm -hmm. that's going on out here, right? So if sure. I say that I, uh, I'm i concerned about women's rights or LGBTQIA mm -hmm. rights, what mm -hmm. am I doing <clears throat> yeah. that to be in alignment? Because my purpose mm -hmm. is to mm -hmm. create equity, right? Yes. Like, so, so racial equity in particular, but I mm -hmm. want equity for everyone. So what mm -hmm. am I doing about it? Right. Yeah, it's interesting too. And you know, Ralph Lauren, little known uh, business owner there, people may have heard of him, perhaps, or heard of a company. But like, you know, I think absolutely, Terrell, and I think, you know, the great example, great story there. Um, everything, and what I hear from that story too are a few things, right? Number one, the idea of being asked questions, you know, hearing someone's experience, how that gives them a sense of value and purpose right there, because they feel as if they're not just, you know, um, uh, sort of a, a cog in the wheel that they're actually being valued and listened to and seen. But also um, the, the idea that this is not like, you know, not a zero sum game. It's not as if one person wins and one loses. It, when you invest in, you know, your employee's purpose and uh, an equity, uh, which is, you know, related topic here, it, it's a win-win, right? I think a lot of companies think that, you know, oh, these are just, you know, quote unquote woke, you know, um, you know, progressive um, folks who are trying to take from the company and give it all to the employees. And the thing is, you know, these measures like, you know, having uh, open dialogue and communications and um, talking to people and getting their perspective, it doesn't cost anything. And even if there are ever some kind of, say, cost involved, let's say, with create, creating certain programs, you know, uh, set up in the company for employees, it's the value, it's an investment. So what you get back in terms of worker satisfaction, right, worker productivity, and I tell this to my clients a lot when they ask me, some of my clients really are great about treating their work as well. And others will ask me questions like, what's the minimum amount of time I have to have to give them off under the law? You know, do I have to give vacation days? Do I, under, in this state, do I have to give, and I'll explain New York state law, but also say, you know, you might be able under the limits of the law, the, the minimum to give, you know, five days in a year, let's say, a sick, sick pay, um, basically, but, but you're, you're losing a lot in terms of employee burnout, in terms of frustration, in terms of exhaustion, fatigue, illness. So, you know, why not offer like three weeks or four weeks of, of pay time off in the, in the year? Why not offer more and get more back? You know, so I think it's kind of in line, right? What you're saying there is interesting. I, I, I just I just want to chime in on that because it's so great to, mm -hmm. that you offer that to them because sure. if I'm happy on the job, yeah. I won't want to take off anyway. Because I'm yeah, sure. be at work, you know, <laughs> doing what I what it is that I love to do. Right. Like you and I love what we do. I know I love, you know, practicing law, being an attorney, practicing employment law. It's like, you know, my wife and I and our son would take vacations, but sometimes the time between vacations kind of goes quickly because, you know, like, oh, we have the I'm enjoying what I do each day. Yes. Now I'll be honest, there are times when life gets stressful and and work gets, you know, done, you know, cranked up to nine, the volume for weeks and there's other stuff happening and sometimes um vacation can't come soon enough but not because it's not because of lack of fulfillment right it's right, not right. because i'm you know clocking in clocking out looking at the clock can't wait to get home um and i know i'm sure for you too you know when you see you know clients of yours and you know your, your jobs uh, i love that phrase too pathologist you know that pastor psychologist blend yes. um so that's you know that's terrific but yeah it's it's like interesting too it kind of takes me to a question you know, just in line with this, I think um, um, really about what well, we talked about this a little bit, the benefits, you know, to a company in investing in each employee's purpose, you know, like why it's worth their their time and money. Um, do you see a similar value as the same investment in 
a company's like diversity and inclusion program, you know, DEI initiatives. You see like how that may increase um, a, an environment where people can live their purpose? I absolutely mm -hmm. do. Mm -hmm. Because again, as we talked about, when you feel like you're not seen, mm -hmm. at some point, what happens is if I'm working for a company and I know that my purpose is one thing, but you mm -hmm. want to relegate me to this thing over here because you can't see my brilliance because you're looking at my color or my gender. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At some point, I'm not going to give you my all as mm -hmm. we've been talking about. Yes. And so what I will see is, well, I don't need to come up with an idea because they're going to overlook me anyway. Mm -hmm. Why should I bother? Mm -hmm. And there are plenty of people mm -hmm. out there who stay in positions like that. And I want to tell your listeners, if you're in a place like that where you're not heard, it's time yeah. for you to go somewhere yeah. else. Mm -hmm. But um, because I think we all should live our purpose. Mm -hmm. I believe that each of us has greatness inside of us. And we're meant to manifest our fullest potential while we're here. Mm -hmm. And if that is not happening, we need to move to something else. Because think about if you stifle your creativity, mm -hmm. think about all the people in the world who are not benefiting from you living your purpose. Right. So not, don't get caught up in the money aspect. I know people need a job. Yes. Yeah. Sure, but sure. there are things that you can do. You absolutely can get another job or you can become mm -hmm. an entrepreneur like I did mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and um, you know, and have your own business. There are things that people can do. And so when I think about um, mm -hmm. for employers with people of color, mm -hmm. uh, really having conversations with people about, are you happy here? Mm -hmm. What would you do here <clears throat> if you had your choice? <clears throat> yeah, how can, yeah. even in your position, how can I uh, ensure yes. that you're doing something where you feel fed, where you feel mm -hmm. nourished? Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. Now, you know, Eric, look, it, it, it has to start with the culture, right? Yeah. Because if it's a, if it's a big company, mm -hmm. Obviously, the president, CEO, uh, CEO, they can't go to people, every individual person and say, are you happy? Sure. But yeah. they can create a culture where they're mm -hmm. making sure that people are seen and heard and valued. You yes. know, and create a space where um, they're listening to people with their ideas about things, even in their department, folks mm. have. Sometimes folks don't even want to move out of their departments. They love mm -hmm. what they're doing, yep. but they're saying there's an easier way to do this, perhaps, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. a creative way of doing this. So just being able to listen and then giving credit to the right mm -hmm. people for coming up with the idea. I think that's very true. I think, you know, we talk about and we hear about this phenomenon of, of quiet quitting, right? If you read about that, it's sort of the... People essentially basically just the old term of phoning it in, right? They're doing yes. the very minimum that they have to do not to get fired. And, and, and you know, people want to, well, everyone has different views. Some some people I've heard opine that, you know, it's a generational thing. And I don't agree with this at all. That it's a lazy generation of young folks who don't take things for, take things for granted. Um, I don't think it's that. I think it's like people, you know, as you mentioned, aren't either living their purpose or feeling fulfilled at work. Um, whether that means, you know, switching roles or making the most of their role they have right now or finding a new work-life balance in their schedules so that they can do, let's say, a passion of theirs, you know, off the clock and the evenings and weekends and holidays and such. But I think that this quiet quitting happens because, you know, companies aren't used to, as you mentioned, <clears throat> creating a culture where people feel safe enough to express you know, what they need. And, you know, the truth is that, you know, like the company suffers when morale is down. When morale is up, you know, the company benefits. So, you know, we actually we've not are at our next commercial break, but when we come back and I'll we'll talk more with uh, the Reverend Dr. TLC about this idea of creating purpose for your employees and 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 helping them evolve and how women and people of color and especially um, are treating the workplace around this issue. So stick around to Employment Law Today. Our guest tonight, Reverend Dr. Carolyn Curry Avery. We'll be right back. Are you passionate about the conversation around racism, 
Hi, I'm Reverend Dr. TLC, host of the Dismantle Racism Show, which airs every Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern on talkradio.nyc. Join me and my amazing guests as we discuss ways to uncover, dismantle, and eradicate racism. That's Thursdays at 11 o'clock a.m. on talkradio.nyc. Are you a small business trying to navigate the COVID-19 related employment laws? Hello, I'm Eric Sauber, employment law business law attorney and host of the new radio show, Employment Law Today. On my show, we'll have guests to discuss the common employment law challenges business owners are facing during these trying times. Tune in on Tuesday evenings from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern Time on talkradio.nyc. Hey, everybody, it's Tommy D, the nonprofit sector connector coming at you from my attic. Each week here on talkradio.nyc, I host a program, Philanthropy and Focus. Nonprofits impact us each and every day, and it's my focus to help them amplify their message and tell their story. Listen each week at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time until 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on talkradio.nyc. You're listening to Talk Radio NYC at www.talkradio.nyc. Now broadcasting 24 hours a day. Welcome back to Employment Law Today. I'm your host, Eric Sauber, and our guest tonight, Reverend Dr. Sherlyn Kuriri, pathologist, author, speaker, and host of the weekly Talk Radio NYC radio show and video broadcast, Spanly Racism. So, um, yeah, uh, Sherlyn, I realize that we're talking about purpose and, and you know, uh, individuals finding their purpose and so living it out as well, talking about racism and equity and inclusion. And it kind of brings up to me the fact that when you were on my show, I think it was about a year ago, it was November, October, 2021, um, maybe November around this time, I think we talked about your upcoming book and that was upcoming back in 2021. And I believe it's been out because I remember you shared this with me once a while back. So I'm curious if you can share with us maybe a little bit about you know, your book, like the title, where we can get it, but also how that relates to the topic tonight. So my book is Dismantling Racism, Healing Separation from the Inside Out, and it came out in April of this year, 2022. Um, You can get it on Amazon. You can go to my website at sacredintelligence.com, which will loop you right back over to Amazon anyway and pick up a copy of it um, as well. Um, You know, Eric, what's really interesting about the book is it's a call to action for predominantly for white people, but for people of color as well, but in a different sort of way for people of color. But it's really about being committed to this work of racial equity. It doesn't matter what your job is, is to be committed. So you're a lawyer. How do you apply these things to, how do you apply racial equity to the work that you do? It's really what we're talking about in the book, like do more than just throw the money at the situation, but say, how does this align with who I am? So I discuss in the book, three pillars, one being what's your why? Why do you want to engage in the work of uh, racial equity? So Mm -hmm. I talk about it from the standpoint of what's your sacred motive? What are you called to do in this moment in time. Because understand that when we talk about purpose, our purpose could change over time. Mm -hmm. We grow and we evolve. And so at this period, my purpose might be, for instance, to work on the wounds of religion. Mm -hmm. Now it might be to look at dismantling racism, or it could be to do both because, hey, Mm -hmm. I'm a pastor. So obviously I hope that I'm healing some wounds of religion as a pastor but I'm also working on dismantling racism. So as a leader, as a transformational leader, one must ask the question, 
about the, the job that they're doing, vocation that they're doing. Is this something that feeds my soul? And now as it's feeding my soul, how mm -hmm. am I helping to manifest greatness in other people? Yes. And so in my book, I'm talking about this idea of searching yourself to say, mm -hmm. why do I want to engage in this work? Because a lot of people came out in 2020, they were rah, rah, rah. I want right. to heal the world. Mm -hmm. And now they've gone mm -hmm. back to business as usual. Mm -hmm. So the book actually says, how can we heal this problem? How can we stand up to mm -hmm. what's going on in the world, do mm -hmm. our jobs that we do, but mm -hmm. also incorporate dismantling racism. The second thing I do in the book is I discuss mm -hmm. this idea of a self-ish mindset. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is going inward mm -hmm. to take a look at your thoughts mm -hmm. and your beliefs about whether you think it's possible to dismantle racism. Mm -hmm. Because I can tell you that one of the things that happens to me all the time for people who take my classes or if they're doing coaching with me, they'll mm -hmm. say, is it possible to dismantle racism? Mm -hmm. And you know how we do it? Mm -hmm. We do it one step at a time. Mm -hmm. I was thinking that might be the answer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. One step, step at, at a time. time. And that old saying, how do you eat an elephant? Which I don't know why that's even a saying. But <laughs> one bite at a time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we have to just do our part. So the self mm -hmm. mindset mm -hmm. going inward and yes. taking a look at saying, you know, why am, again, why am I doing this? What are my, what are my thoughts about it? And of course mm -hmm. I use some psychological stuff in my book because why? Because I'm a psychologist. Because it is, right? mm -hmm. So I talk about how we were conditioned. We're in a world where we're conditioned mm -hmm. in, in a racist system, but we're also conditioned even to believe that we can't do something. So we have to recondition ourselves. Yes. And then the third piece is about this shared movement to know mm -hmm. and to understand that we're not dismantling racism by ourselves. Mm -hmm. And that's why a company, mm. a company who has its values mm -hmm. and mission as racial equity, among other things, if you are treating everybody in your company uh, as individuals who have a purpose mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. and everyone is valued, mm -hmm. you will understand each of us in the company is responsible for dismantling racism, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. not just the diversity, equity, and inclusion officer. Committee, right. The officer, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. so, so what often happens is you'll have a DEI officer mm -hmm. and then that officer doesn't have any clout. To do anything. Right. Yeah. So they're mm -hmm. really, they're not really living their purpose either. They may feel mm -hmm. like they are mm -hmm. uh, until they get in the job and they realize that their hands are tied. So, mm -hmm. so the really dismantling racism is about how do we heal? How do we go inward and heal? Mm -hmm. and, and I will tell you, Eric, in the <clears throat> trainings that I do with people, particularly mm -hmm. the trainings that I do that are specifically healing separation from the inside out. Mm -hmm been two full days with the individuals that I'm working with. Yes, right. Taking them back to who they are. Hmm. Helping them to remember who are they? Because you know, Eric, you and I both mm -hmm. know people who who just hate what they do. They hate their jobs mm -hmm. as a result. They make everybody else's life miserable. Sure, so people like that. Yeah. In in healing this mm -hmm. racial you know, uh, divide that we have, mm -hmm. we're take people back to who are you? Mm. Who are you? Right. Yeah. It's, a, it's an excellent question. I mean, so much goes out there, you know, really, Charlene, just like, you know, that you said, wow, the, the why, right? Does this feed your soul? You know, this, what's your purpose, right? You know, what steps are you taking to align, say, your beliefs around racism with your actions, both in the company as an employee, or as, or as a manager, or an employer, and in the world? And I think you can't separate those two, right? If right, you're, right. you know, out in the world doing this uh, good work and you can bring it into your workplace, um, but definitely hear that as well as the idea, just to note here, the fascinating stuff you're talking about, the idea of, like, you know, the, um, just the, the motive and the selfish motive, but selfish not with the usual connotation that we have of that being wrong or bad, but more going inward, looking towards the self, like towards 
one's motives and values. And I love what you said about purpose can change and evolve. I mean, you know, as an attorney, I represent companies, employers, business owners, small to mid-sized businesses here in New York State with compliance and litigation and consulting and transactions. But, you know, I started out representing individual employees and it was all in lit litigation, appeals, civil rights work, um, immigration law. And, and that was great and served the purpose for a while, but also the the kind of the, the, cons the drain on the system of doing litigation appeals every day and day out, just every day, you know, with arguments, depositions, motions, more arguments, um, it was, it became exhausting. And what I found is that, you know, I, I can still have an impact in society by helping companies to follow the rules and align with the, with the different, you know, statute. And also when they run afoul of it, you know, defending them so that they don't lose their whole business. Mm -hmm. um, maybe in the and maybe in mediation, there's a healing process where they do recognize their part, and it happens more often than people realize. You know, it's not always just a matter of you know the company writing a check. Sometimes they do actually see where they went afoul of the law or where they misstep. And I've seen companies that genuinely want to change that, and I've seen ones that don't. Right, that just you know write a okay. settlement check. To your point about throwing money at a problem, okay, how much they want? Here's the check. Costs less than litigating. Now let's move on, and they go back to business as usual. And you know, I offer them the chance to um, have a conversation with me about these issues, so that we can, you know, maybe systemically change things. And the ones that take me up on that offer often don't come back for litigation defense. Mm -hmm. They come back for other issues. The right. ones that say no, everything's fine. I did nothing wrong. Often will call me back in two or three months about another employee and another employee, another. So I just, you know, I echo everything you're saying and I just add that perspective to it, you know, in terms of like, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. changing. Mm -hmm. You know, I wanted to go back to something too mm -hmm. that I said about it, the purpose changing. Yes. It's important for people to recognize. So whether we're talking about racism or anything else, when we think about our purpose, <clears throat> we're different people over as we progress through life. You're mm -hmm. different than you were 10 years ago or five years That's ago. Right. Quite frankly, we're different even than we were last week because mm -hmm. we've met some people since last week mm -hmm. that have probably changed our lives. We've had some interactions. Mm -hmm. Something has happened, you yeah. know, that's different for us. And so we don't mm -hmm. have to be so wedded to just one thing. We don't have to be wedded to what people thought we would be mm -hmm. doing. That's why people right. change careers. Mm -hmm. you know, in the sure. middle of it, they'll say, oh my gosh, I was making so much money. I was in corporate or I was doing this or I was doing that. And then I just found that I wasn't happy with mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. We are meant to be fulfilled. In yes. life. And I want to just say the other thing too, about finding your purpose. Mm -hmm. Another thing that people can do, mm -hmm. there are all sorts of assessment tools that are out here mm -hmm. for helping us to determine what mm -hmm. it is we enjoy in life, what it is we're really, really good at. Now, I do want to say there's some things that we're good at that we don't like doing. So then stay away from those things. Sure. Do it. And I don't think we should do things out of compulsion as mm -hmm. well or obligation as mm -hmm. it relates to your purpose. That's all I yes, want to say. Right. Because some things in life we <clears throat> have to do. Um, and, and there are ways even though we are involved <clears throat> in things that are out of our control, so to speak, like if there's <clears throat> things that you have to do because there's mm -hmm. downsizing in your company and you don't control for that. And you yeah. have to work some work in a position that you don't want to work in. There are ways, and I um, you know, I know we're gonna have to take a break, but there are ways of that, even that finding right. joy in the midst of doing the things that you don't want to do. Mm -hmm. And I would I would love for your listeners to hear, even if you're in a position right. where you are not <clears throat> being hurt and where you are not being valued, you mm -hmm. can make a strategic plan to decide mm -hmm. how you will be heard or to decide whether you will leave. But if you know that you're in a position that you're working in that you don't like until you can find a way of getting out of that position there mm -hmm. are also things to do to make sure that you're happy in yes. that position and your attitude makes all the difference in the world that is such an important point and it's it's so funny because i was going to mention that in reference and then you just you know 
launch right into it. It's a, part, it's a very interesting point. People listening tonight, whether you're the employee, you know, who thinks, well, that's all great and all good, but, you know, I'm, you know, I need this job to pay my rent and support my kids and it's not that simple, that you can make a plan, but you can actually find ways to be happy where you are now and be purposeful. And for employers too, if you run a company and you feel as if, you know, you don't like what you're doing anymore, but you can't just close up shop tomorrow. Um, lots of times in life, we have to, you know, look at the long picture and say, I don't like this job or this apartment or this whatever, this, you know, situation, but I'm going to change it, but it takes time. But in the meantime, you can be purposeful, purpose-driven and happy. And when we come back from our break, um, we have to take a commercial break um, here on Talk Radio NYC, uh, Employment Law Today. I'm Eric Sauver, my host, my host, I'm the host. <laughs> my guest <laughs> is Dr. Reverend uh, Terlyn Curry A. Reed, Dr. Reverend, Reverend Doctor, sorry. It's been a long, long week. Already. I um, know. Only Tuesday, it's been a long week. <laughs> uh, the Reverend Dr. TLC, Stay tuned. We'll talk more about this whole idea of purpose and, and, and bringing your life into harmony with what you're meant to do. So stick around. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody. It's Tommy D, the nonprofit sector connector coming at you from my attic. Each week here on talkradio.nyc, I host a program, Philanthropy in Focus. Nonprofits impact us each and every day, and it's my focus to help them amplify their message and tell their story. Listen each week at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time until 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on talkradio.nyc. In a post-COVID world, you may have many unanswered questions regarding your health. Are you looking to live a healthier lifestyle? Do you have a desire to learn more about mental health and enhance your quality of life? Or do you just want to participate in self-understanding and awareness? I'm Frank R. Harrison, host of Frank About Health, and each Thursday, I will tackle these questions and work to enlighten you. Tune in every Thursday at 5 p.m. on talkradio.nyc, and I will be Frank About Health to advocate for all of us. Are you a conscious co-creator? Are you on a quest to raise your vibration and your consciousness? I'm Sam Leibowitz, your Conscious Consultant, and on my show, The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, we will touch upon all these topics and more. Listen live at our new time on Thursdays at 12 noon Eastern Time. That's The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, Thursdays, 12 noon on talkradio.nyc. You're listening to Talk Radio NYC at www.talkradio.nyc. Now broadcasting 24 hours a day. Welcome back to Employment Law Today. I'm your host, Eric Sovereign. I'm an employment law attorney here in New York State. I'm here tonight with my guest, the Reverend Doctor, I'm going to say it correctly this time, Tara Lynn Curry Avery, aka the Reverend Doctor TLC. I'm talking about her book recently, talking about um, a purpose driven life in the employment context for employers and employees. And, you know, um, Tara, I just want to ask you in that regard, do you foresee what changes might you foresee, let's say, trends, you know, patterns in the workplace if employers shift towards focusing on their employees, you know, on uh, honoring their purpose, helping them to evolve their purpose? Like, how do you see that impacting the workforce today? Well, it's interesting because I, I see it impacting the individual first and foremost, because we talked about the health-related issues, the medical, the physical, the psychological I think that um, we would see a decrease for one in the in the the health disparities, the health issues that we're seeing. That's one thing. But I think just in terms of the company itself, mm -hmm. you know, if people are happy, again, if the culture is one in which uh, people feel secure in living their purpose. I think that you're going to see a company that really is a, a stellar company that's outshining many of the other companies that are out there. And they'll be able to say, this is our model. And then those companies would invariably be more concerned about what is happening in the community. Mm 
right? So I think that there's a there's a trickle down effect, so to speak, because if this company says these are my values, I value my employees, the employees are going to come in and they're going to be thinking about, hey, what's happening within my own world? Mm-hmm. What's happening in my community? And they're going to take those issues to their company and say, hey, do you want to partner with the community to do X, Y, and Z? And so ultimately, I think it's something that benefits not just the, the company, mm-hmm. but it benefits the world. And so that's what I think the trend is. And so if an employer mm-hmm. really wants to practice what they preach and say, we're this company that cares about the world, right? Then- listening to their employees would be a start to there. Yeah, you know, I think so too. I think it's a really good point, you know, Carolyn, I think. And looking towards the future, you know, the workforce is just changing so much. I mean, evolving, changing. There's just new ways of working, being a look at the fact that, you know, I can run a law firm, a law practice, um, and spend in my, in my office three days a week and two days a week working from home. You know, that would have been, very rare to do just three or four years ago, or to have somebody swear two days. And you know, and and people are running all companies like remotely. They're running them hybrid. Um, they're hiring people in different fields. So my point is that there are all kinds of changes, and I think you know a lot of changes have also had to do with how companies look at the way that the their workers are satisfied and happy. I think there's more of a push towards you know employee satisfaction, employees being seen and heard, and mm-hmm. I think the companies that get that are the ones that will be successful. And the ones that don't are gonna keep hearing phrases like great resignation, you know, great reshuffle and, you know, quiet quitting. And they'll be like, yep, that's my company. You know, that's what's happening to me. Um, but I think, you know, it comes back to all the things that you and I have been speaking about tonight and everything <clears throat> from the why and your purpose, um, everything you said really is, mm-hmm. I think, relevant mm-hmm. here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. We have uh, probably down to that last couple of minutes or so like, of the show. I know we are to a slightly later start, but um, what I like to do usually is I like to give my guests, you know, a couple minutes to talk about what's going on for you in terms of any upcoming. Oh, there we go. We got the three minute mark. Um, what's happening for you, Terlin? Any upcoming shows, new books, events, how people contact you? The floor is yours. Yes, 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 yes. I do want to uh, encourage people to listen on Thursdays at 11 o'clock a.m. to the Dismantle Racism show. You can always catch it uh, afterwards as well on Talk Radio NYC if for some reason you missed the live show. But in January, I have a six-week program that's coming Mm -hmm. up. It's mm-hmm. January 11th, and it's going to be for six weeks. Mm-hmm. The time is 11 o'clock to 12.30, where I actually will be teaching people how to recognize and respond to racism. The course is mm-hmm. called A Blueprint to End Racism. So I give really mm-hmm. concrete steps in there for how do you show up? How do you engage in this work of dismantling racism? But then mm-hmm. after that, um, in I am doing... Um, after it ends, excuse me, I'm doing a two-day retreat on February 24th and 25th. You don't have to attend one to attend the other. But on February 24th and 25th, I'm going to actually be working with leaders and other individuals who are interested in learning, how do we heal separation from the inside out? How do we go back and take a look at our purpose and our why for engaging in this work? And how do we incorporate it into our everyday lives. So mm. uh, you can learn more about it by going to sacredintelligence.com and mm. you can register there. And you can also reach out to me as well, going to that website, sacredintelligence.com. Interesting. Wow. Nick, good stuff you know, for our audience to listen to tonight to think about. Yeah. <clears throat> wow. Well, I mean, Charlyn, first off, I want to thank you so much for, for being a guest tonight. And as Audience may or may not know you actually filled in for someone that unfortunately couldn't make it. So you were um, right there on the fly. So she did this all, you know, within like 15 minutes before the show started. And so I'm really uh, grateful that we can have this conversation just from the heart, spontaneously speaking. Really terrific. And just, you know, congratulations to you on the success of your book. Um, you. And you're encouraged everyone, you're welcome to get a copy and to go to, um, to go to Tone's website for more information about that. And, you know, also say that. If you enjoyed our show, if you like what you see, like what you heard, tell your friends, tell your colleagues, tell your families, uh, members to tune in on Tuesday evenings 
from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time here on the Talk Radio NYC, or you can catch us on uh, Spotify, Stitcher, um, Google Podcasts, Amazon, and what's the other one? It's always one I would leave out. Uh, Spotify? Yes, that one. Stitcher, maybe it's Google Play. Um, huh. But in any event, um, I just want to thank everyone all for listening tonight and joining us. And a special thanks to you, Reverend Dr. TLC. I'm wishing everyone a wonderful night, a good uh, rest of the week, and stay tuned for more great programming right here on Talk Radio NYC. So once again, just want to thank you so much for being here. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. You're yeah, my pleasure. So all right, I guess we're at that hour. Thank you so much. Thank you.